Okay, so some of this I'm going to go. I don't know why it's still rolling through there. Um, so, you know, like I said, this is going to be help helping you understand. You can use this to help your agents understand. Um, it's going to give a high level overview of what we're looking at on the ACA. Um, it's going to show you what the plans are, the, the, the metal plans, the SCPs. Um, it'll give you a 75% good knowledge tutorial of how and what we need to look at with the ACA. Um, what's the marketplace? Okay, so the insurance marketplace provides health insurance and shopping and uh, enrollment services for individuals and families, as well as employees in the shop through websites, call centers, and in person. Everything that I recommend, everything we do, and y'all know this, you've heard this from me enough of times, is, is, is to do it in person or to have the person go through a link that is sent through them, either through a QR code or through um, a social media site. We don't want to have them doing it any other way and also trying to pay their, pay, you know, pay their premiums and, and do things that are not going to be um, beneficial to them. Um, the marketplace will determine eligibility for coverage in the marketplace, the applied premium tax credit, um, the CSRs, the cost sharing reductions, and CHIP. Two of the main things here about ACA are the applied premium tax credit or the subsidized premiums and the CSR. The CSR is a silver plan within a silver plan. And I'll jump around on this some because y'all know y'all know some of this already, but it's one of the it's the it is the lowest out of pocket. It is the best plan for people who need it the most. So we always want to make sure that we get them a CSR whenever possible. Okay, it is the best of the best. The marketplace can operate under two options. Okay, we have federal and state. Okay, and at the end here, I will talk to you about the state. There are 22 states that have a state based and then the other, um, the other uh, 50, another 28 are um, on the federal system. They are different. They are different. They are totally different. Okay, the state base are they have their own unique quirks to them. They have their own unique situations. They may have you do something on requirements or certifications or whatever it may be. You have to be very diligent and do your due diligence on the state base because they do not have any kind of rhyme or reason with the federal system. Okay, so the ones that are on the federal system. Are all basically uniformed with healthcare.gov or um, or Health Sherpa, but the state base are individualized. Um, there are three states that use the federal system um, as to input apps, and I'll tell you who those are at the end. But just be aware, and I'll give you the list that we have that Jan gave us out here a few months ago. Um, great tutorial. But be aware of the state basis versus the federal because they are they they, they are night and day um, for what you have to do and to um, and for who they are. All right, so consumers using the marketplace. All right, consumers can use the marketplace to find and apply for health and dental coverage that fits their budgets and specific needs. On the dental side of it. I recommend you using a different source than the dental plans that are attached to the ACA plans. Um, I like to separate it because if they cancel their ACA plan, they can keep their dental plan. Okay, so you can keep coverage. Um, this is exactly what Galen was talking about on Tuesday in her, in her presentation. Um, sometimes it's separating the coverage Looking at different aspects is better. Plus, you can get a lot better coverage on some of our dental plans outside of the coverage factors than you can that are wrapped into an ACA plan. Okay, so know what your plans are, know what they are on the dental on the dental side. But usually, I mean, almost all the time, you can get much better coverage, much better rates for outside protection, 
um, for our United Healthcare plans, our Cigna plans, our Manhattan plans um, outside of the, the protect, uh, outside of the protection than you can inside of the ACA plan. Um, consumers and the finding coverage, consumers and FFM and state based um, can find coverage through the healthcare.gov. Though the SBM slash FP, those are the state based that are on the federal plan. And there's three of those that I told you I would tell you about at the end. Consumers in state based can find coverage through the state based marketplace websites. Usually, if you go to healthcare.gov and you have a state based um, like Colorado or something, they will reroute you um, on the healthcare.gov. You can get rerouted through uh, to the to the state based system. Applying for coverage, consumers can apply either online or by phone or by mail. We've kind of talked about that. We're, we do it on our where we're personalizing it because if they don't, they get confused and it just makes it easier for them. Um, one thing I want to talk about that I want you to be really proactive against or with is the AOR, the agent of record. As we move forward and as a lot of a lot of agencies and and me involved and, and a lot of the ones that have really been you know diligent in talking about this, the AOR is something that has come up and you will hear more and more about this going forward. So I want to give me two minutes to really kind of discuss this. Each carrier now is implementing its own agent of record standards. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean you can't change them. But a lot of times, if you have an agent who runs across an, uh, a client who doesn't know who they bought their protection from, uh, maybe they didn't get the right plan, um, they haven't utilized it at all, they're under 150% of the federal poverty level, they have an SCP, it is, on, is, it is beneficial to them to get a new plan that may be a better CSR, cost saving reduction plan because it's the best of the best um have that agent become the aor and start getting compensation on it um the the carrier if the carrier has its um, guidelines in place where you can't um the list that i have for you you can call that area manager they will work with you you can give them the name of that person who you're working with and your agent number and they will almost nine times out of 10, they will approve it and they will let you become the AOR for that agent. It's a great way for an agent to, it's a great way for an agent to build up a book of business by talking to people who purchase stuff through healthcare.gov directly, didn't know what they were getting. Okay. I have a lot of agents who I've spoken with and I've told them to look for you know, ask the question, who's your agent? If they don't know who their agent is, ask them where, where do they get their protection from? Where where was their, you know, where was their guidance? Well, I got it from some guy online. I haven't talked to him since. Ask to be their AOR, okay? If they know who their agent is and their agent's helping them out, I leave them alone, okay? That's just house respect, okay? Um, if they're doing them a good job, I would want somebody moving mine. I don't want to move theirs. They're doing a good job. That's fine. Maybe we'll talk to them next OEP. But a lot of the clients bought it through uh, an online service. They bought it through just going and Googling it, and they don't know what they have. They don't have the best protection. So a great way for an agent to build up, a great way for Copeland to get some good apps is to look at where and who has the AOR. But Joe, please keep hang, on a, hang on a second. I, I was under the impression, and I'll, I think I may be wrong based on what you said, that every time you change a customer from one plan to the other, the AOR goes to the new agent. Did, is that not the case? No, sir. No. Um, each carrier now is implementing their own AOR change. And if you... Um, I believe the one is and better right now. If you change an and better and you do not get um, like approval, um, the previous agent will stay the agent. Even though the even though the original agent hasn't done bookcase. Yes, sir. They 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 don't know that though. 
That's why you have to communicate with your local regional uh, rep representative and talk to him and let him know what the AOR status is. Wow. So how do you how do you change it in the in the uh, in health is it in health Sherpa that you actually have to go in? And... You have to go in like you're taking a new app. Go into the very end. You would input your NPN. Hit apply. Okay, and then it goes to the carrier, and then the carrier will with with their with their with their new structure. It will it will red flag it, and but if you have done your due diligence, like I just said. It will, it will be, uh, it will, it will be approved. The things that are going to come up as we move forward, but you, I just want you to know that there are protocols in place that it's very, that we have solutions for this. Okay. And it's very important because an AOR is something that can help an agent go from 0 apps to 20 apps very quickly. Okay, it can help us get to the 1500 apps that Alan wants us to get to in our new territories a lot faster. Okay, um, because, like I said, a lot of the clients bought these through an, an online service or Google search. And they don't have the proper and they don't have the proper care. They don't have the proper policy. So I wanted to mention that to you because it's just something. And like I said, almost every carrier now Cigna and better. Almost every care United, every carrier now is implementing an AOR change because what happened was, was that these tax offices were coming in with, they were, they were having access to the socials and everything. They were going in and they were knocking out a large block or a large book of people's business and changing the AOR without the new forms being signed, without the consent forms being signed, without anything. CMS was doing nothing. Department of insurances were doing nothing. They knew there was being no recourse against them and they were changing hundreds of policies every year. Um, and it, and it wasn't right. So, with everyone banding together, um, we had to go to the carriers and the carriers are now implementing. Um, the, the guidelines and each carrier is now doing what I just said. So but Joey, if, if there's that carrier change, so let's say somebody moved from Ambetter over to Cigna, a carrier change, that's totally okay. Just making yes, sure. This is Got this it. is Paul. This is this was in the same policy. Got it. Perfect. Thank you. So let me let me ask you a similar a follow up question. So <laughs> if the customer is happy with the plan but not happy with the agent, is it the same process? Yes, sir. And it's the same answer. Yes, sir. So you you can do that through Sherpa also. You do that, but you have to make sure you communicate with your regional with your regional representative for that care for that orally? company. I I do it orally and I'd follow up with a with it with an email just for documentation purposes. Okay. Okay. So we got that. I just want to make sure y'all understand that because it's very important that that's a great way to help an agent um, really start succeeding and talking about agents with their, especially if they're in a certain area and, you know, they'll get the, the, the it, it would, it will just come to them. You'll be surprised how many people you talk to one. Well, I don't know who my guy is either. And it just snowballs. And so I just want you to be aware that there is a solution for that and we can really help the agents out. But then again, if an agent is ha if an, if the clients are happy and they do they do have an agent, I always say please leave them alone and maybe we'll talk next OEP um, on our regular um, on a, on a regular conversation. All right, marketplace plan requirements. Marketplace plans must provide qualifying health coverage. They have they all have to have essential health benefits. These next few slides are things that I want you to know, but they're just they're they're just things that are that every single health plan has to have in order to be considered an affordable health care plan. Okay, um, they have to have certain cost sharings. Uh, they have to have certain mandatory loss ratios, and they have to be, of course, non discrimination requirements, and have to have network adequacies, um, which is becoming a very large topic because a lot of the people are getting into the system now, and a lot of the doctors are closing their panels. And not letting anybody know. 
So all of these are going to be things that are going to be coming up to you that as we move on, we'll have other discussions. Okay. These are the potential. These are the potential. The 10 essential health benefit categories. Okay. One that I want you, they're, they're all the same. The, the big one is it's guaranteed issue. Um, but number 10 is pediatric services include dental and vision. Okay. So pediatric services include dental and vision um, in most of the plans that are into the, especially the CSRs. But these are the, um, the 10 essential health benefits that every plan has to have. And here are our metal plans. And if you don't know this now, we're going to know this together. Each plan has a certain mandatory loss ratio. Okay, so the actuarial value on the bronze has to be a 60 40. Okay, 60% consumer, 40% uh, to 60% uh, consumer, 40% company. Sil silver is 70 30, gold is 80 20, platinum is 90 10. That's why you do not see any platinums because, of course, as we know, the larger the 90%, the larger the 90 10 is yes. going to be a larger expense to the insured and it becomes unaffordable. Okay. That's why you see the gold plans, um, not as many as the silver and the bronze. That's why you see a lot more zero, zero premiums on the bronze because it's the 60, 40, the, uh, the insurance carriers have less percentage, um, at value than they do with any other plan. Okay. So it's great to know just in case someone lets in case someone says, well, you know, new agent goes, well, why are the bronze plans always the most sold or, or the cheapest premium? Well, that's because it's a 60, 40 value and the other ones are the 70, 30 and so forth and so on. You know, the, and sometimes when we go into this, the bronze also has the highest deductible. Okay. The bronze also has some of the highest out of pocket costs. So, one of the things that I want to share, and just as we go in, you'll know this, sometimes the, a bronze zero premium plan is not the best plan for your consumer. The best plan for your consumer, which I have a slide for this, it may be two or three pages in to the, into the, what, what you're looking at. It may have a $5 premium to it. A $5 premium may cut their out-of-pocket costs by over half. It may bring their deductible down from 9,100 to 2,000. Okay, just, just having a $5 premium. So always, be, have your, always have your agents be diligent in looking at that because, you know, it's great having a zero premium, but if they use it and they have to pay those ex high expenses, you know, they better have a gap plan uh, attached to it because they can't afford what they can't afford already what they have. They darn sure can't afford, you know, fifteen thousand dollars in out of pocket costs. So please be aware of that as well, please. There is a there is a catastrophic plan. Okay. I don't know of anybody who sells it. You have to be under 30 to get it. It is basically a hospitalization plan. Um, but like I said, I honestly do not know uh, of a carrier that that even has it. I think United has one, but it is um, it's not even sold. Um, but it is on there and is available, so it is part of the presentation. All right, who is eligible for, for coverage through the marketplace? Very important slide. To be eligible for coverage through the marketplace, individuals and households must live in the U.S. in a state served by the marketplace where they're applying, um, and even in that case, in the zip code where they're applying, be a U.S. citizen, a U.S. national, or a lawfully present immigrant. Okay, very important. Lawfully present immigrant for the entirety time they plan to have coverage and not be incarcerated. And how okay? does one prove that? How does one prove that? Which one? Lawfully present immigrant. Okay, if they have a certain green card, if they uh, are, if they are a U.S. national representative card, all of that is 
if they have a TIN number, a tax identification number. A lot of them don't have a social, but they have a TIN number. A TIN number can get them coverage even if they don't have a social. Joey, I'm sorry. What about the asylum? I'm sorry, I got three people talking at once. I couldn't hear it. Say it again. Sorry. What about asylum? If they claim asylum, is that in I'm their not term? sure. I, not, okay. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would have to. There's a, at, at the very end. There's even times, y'all, that I have to call. I call healthcare.gov and I ask them questions because there are still questions that and I, and I have people that I talk to and there's questions that I still there's not 100% of that I have the knowledge. So I still learn and all I ask is that if we all learn and I like the asylum question. I have not been asked the asylum question before. So I have not looked into it. Um and if I call and we all get the answer, if we'll all share the, the same answer together, it will help awesome. us get where we need to go to. So always be awesome. clear. Joey, I have a question. Did yes, I had mentioned yeah. it to you once? I mentioned it to you once before. If a student is over here going to college and on a on a student visa, and they've got something called the I twenty, are they? Yes. Can they get it? They have a TIN or a social, but they're staying here year around studying out of college. And I've got agents that are have the ability to write like twenty college students right now. Can they do that, or were you able to obtain an answer? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So they, yes, so they have no social and they have no TIN. They can, they can technically get it, but it has to be off exchange. They have to pay the full premium. They cannot get a subsidized premium. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Tony, you were confused on something. What can I clear up? No, for you, I was just gonna. The, 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 number two is a little bit um, the concerning to me because a U.S. citizen obviously is self-descriptive. U.S. Right. national, I guess, as a legal resident, mm -hmm. but I don't know what a lawfully present immigrant is. I mean, it's, if you cross the the border, uh, if you cross the Rio Grande, are you a lawfully present immigrant? No, sir. Someone, someone who has. Someone who's over here gone through documentation purposes and has been over here for several years um, and has I'll be honest with you. I don't know. Of, I don't know all the the documentation descriptions that go with all of it. I'm sure I can get it for us, but um, I know that the ones that I have helped that I have talked to the agents. Um, a couple of them, I'll be honest with you. They've had no social. They've had a TIN. They have a they have a work visa. They've been over here for four or five years, and we have they have actually applied, and they have been they have they have been approved for an ACA plan. Does that as include strange, DACA? As, I know DACA as strange, was going to. As strange as that may sound, DACA comes DACA? into a DACA comes into a different category. Because okay. it's under their own, it's under their own. It's the children that came over, you know, during a certain time. Um, I actually believe that if they just went through what the lawfully present immigrant, the way it was worded, I believe they could get coverage. By some of the craziness that I've seen, people get coverage. But I thought there was no part of my language, no way in hell that they would get coverage, and they've applied and got coverage. I was dumbfounded. I was like, there's, there's no way. To... I remember this fall, Joey, I sent you something about a month ago. There's expanded DACA coverage coming yeah, this fall enrollment period. So anyone with DACA will be able to enroll and it'll be yes, easy. Sir. It's part of the the legal changes. Yes, sir. I saw that. They will get a subsidy? Yes. Well, it'll be, the, it'll, it'll go into their income. If their, if their income is where it's still, it's still going to be income based. Okay. If, they, okay. If, if they get an applied premium tax credit, yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Like I said, this right here, that that section number two, it it, it brings up a lot of questions every time, and it's still it's still some of those um you know it's still some of those 
dark gray areas on the lawfully present immigrants that it's um, that still is is amazing to me. The ones that I've seen that have applied um, having no social um, um, CMS wants people in the system so bad. It um, it's amazing what they and how they allow them to go into um, when they have just a TIN um, and they pay taxes and they can verify um, their income to get a subsidized premium or wherever they're at. All right. So here are the um, here's really the uh, the applied premium tax credit and um, with the federal poverty level and um, and the FPL um, at the end of this or here at the end of this. All y'all seen it. You probably have it. If you don't, I'll get it. Um, I'll even work. Make sure every year um, I'll get everybody out the new one every year. Um, you know, make sure we have our Copeland and what we have. The uh, the federal poverty level the FPL chart is really the Bible to um, the ACA. Okay, it gives you your dependents, it gives you your number, it gives you your income, how many your you know what's your income to dependent ratio, where you are on your FPL chart, um, and it really gives you where you're at if you're the SEP of 150 percent, um, if you're in the 250 percent. During OEP, where you get your CSR, um, it really gives the agent a good guideline of where they are on the income to where they should be if they are, you know, getting a subsidized premium. And if they're too far out, how much it should be or where they're, you know, where just give them a good overview. Okay. Um, and so this is. Um, I'm going. I'm going to go skip to number two dot. If consumers' projected annual household income um, it falls between 100 and 400 percent of the federal poverty level, they may qualify for a premium tax credit. Premium tax credits are only available to consumers who enroll in individual marketplace plans through the marketplace on exchange. So there's two things: there's on exchange and off exchange. On exchange means that you're looking for a premium tax credit off exchange, which there aren't that many on there. That means there's no tax credit that will be applied. Okay. Eligible consumers can use all some or none of their premium tax credit. Usually they're going to use all their premium tax credit. They're not going to go, well, I'm, I only want to use half. I'm going to file my taxes. And if I get the other half, I'll get it back. They're always going to use all their premium tax credit, but they do have it at their disposal to only use a partial if they want to. Just letting you know. If if a consumer is ineligible for Medicaid, and this is another one that is a, a very interesting one. If a consumer is ineligible for Medicaid based on immigration status, they may be eligible to enroll in a marketplace plan with a premium tax credit. Even if they are under 100% of the FPL, if otherwise eligible, that statement is so doggone vague. Um, I, I can ask 5 people who are the smartest of the smarts in ACA and they will give you different versions of what that means. Okay. It hardly comes up, but. It, it's you, it, it may be 1 of those quirky situations that something happens. Um, but it is just a weird statement that is in all of the, um, it's in all of the training doc, uh, the training docs that, um, CMS, um, and healthcare.gov puts out. So, so Joey, I find, I have it, a really I find it important stupid, to enroll. I have a stupid question. I'm sure it's going to be stupid, but let me ask it <laughs> <It's> anyway. <okay. laughs> So, if somebody, if you know, somebody does not qualify for any tax subsidy. Is there a reason to go on or off? I mean, if they're not going to use if, a tax subsidy. You, the reason, yes, ma'am, if you go off, okay, first off, there's only a select number of companies and plans that are off exchange. Okay. Okay. So, you don't have as much to choose from. Um, you may pay a 5% less um, premium if you're off 
if you have an off plan in your area and you but you may not if you go on the on exchange and don't get a subsidy you may pay a little bit more but you have a lot more to choose from can i okay. answer that too so also yes, on the off exchange you could be subject to underwriting versus the on exchange there's no health questions no underwriting depending okay. on the character well, but there's mm -hmm. isn't there a guarantee well, issue election period? I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any underwriting on the office. Yeah, not if it's ACA. It's short term medical as underwriting, but not an ACA on or off. Yeah, short term medical, but ACA, there's ACA there's no underwriting. There's underwriting? They're, they can underwrite for an ACA if it's off, they, they, off exchange. They can. I haven't ACA seen contract. anything on the off exchange yeah. underwritten. It's still yeah. G. It's, it's still GI, but it's yeah. they only the carriers only have maybe one or two, one plan. And whereas you have a multitude of plans to choose from if they're on exchange. On exchange. Okay, so then the special enrollment period, I mean, there's the same type, I mean, during the open enrollment period at the end of the year, but then if there's a change in their status throughout the year, they get a special enrollment period, right? Yes, like ma'am. Yes, ma okay. they, they, they still have certain SCPs. Yes, ma'am. Got it. So why would anybody want to go to the off exchange? Yeah, that's I guess my better. They question. they 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 may pay a five or six percent less premium. Okay. That's the, that's the that's the only reason. God, thanks, Joe. Yes, ma'am. Depending on the carrier, off exchange. I can't hear. Okay, um, here is one of the most important slides that you that every that you have to make sure that you convey with your agents all the time. Okay, um, is the reconciliation of your tax credit of your subsidized premium? I don't care if it is ten dollars. If they are if they are paying ninety cents a month. And they are less than, you know, they're $10 in, in tax credits. They have to, 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 they have to reconcile their tax credit. If they do not, they will get their policy canceled. Okay. So the amount of premium tax credit a consumer is eligible for may change throughout the year. Okay. If, um, if there are changes to the consumer's changes to their consumer's household income, um, how, um, household size, or other determining factors, it's very important that consumer report life changes to the marketplace. It's very it's, it happens a lot in the in the um, um, in the construction business. Maybe they had an off year and they got a subsidized premium. They had a lot of build jobs or a lot of construction jobs coming in the next year, and they're going to make $150,000 the next year, and they didn't report it correctly, and they shouldn't have got a credit. And now they're getting $1,000 a month in tax credits, and when they file their taxes, Uncle Sam's going to want that $12,000 back, and they are going to be upset with you because they're saying that you didn't tell them that they were, that they want to pay that back. So always and always, always make sure that you have the agents, let them know that if there's any change to their income, to please let them and the marketplace know. If there are any, if there's anything that is going to, um, you know, if there's anything that's going to, that, that they have to reconcile, the reconciliation and change of household income are two things that are mandatory that those clients, you know, that they share with you, that they that they make sure that they are y'all are in communication with. They will get letters from CMS, healthcare.gov, the carrier, and invariably the people will ignore every single letter to reconcile their APTC. Make sure they don't. It is very, very important for them. Okay, especially when they get ready to file their taxes or they, they have to file their taxes, or if they don't, and Uncle Sam sends them a letter saying that, that they want back their $6,000. And now they're having to work from the backside, 
trying to tell them, well, it was actually justified and now it's a pain in the behind. Okay, so please make sure that you talk when you're training the agents that they're talking to their clients, that those are two things that they talk about all the time, that, that those are two very, very important factors that need to be conveyed at every presentation. Okay. If consumers use the applied premium tax credit in excess of their premium tax credit that are determined eligible, they may be required to repay all sum or the difference when they file their federal income tax. They both they there, there is no maybe, they will be required to pay it back. If consumers use less than determined eligible when they file their federal income tax, they may receive the difference as a refundable credit. Okay. So that is the um, that is the statement that is very important. Any questions on this team? So when they when they have to repay, so is it one single payment, or can that be a sort of mortgage throughout the year? That's going to be with them and the IRS. That's that's how they want. That's however they want to set that up. So, but payment yeah. arrangements are possible. It is, but it, you know how payment arrangements are. If there's payment arrangements, there's gonna IRS is gonna you know start the start start the interest uh, start the interest clock. Yeah, on them. of course, of course, yeah, okay. All right, very important, very important slide that when y'all are doing trainings, you're talking to your agents. Please make sure they understand this to talk to the consumers. All right. Some consumers who apply for coverage through the marketplace and qualify for premium tax credits might also qualify for extra savings called CSRs or cost sharing reduction plans. These are awesome plans team. This is what you want. This is what you want your consumer if they can get this. This is this is this is the plan that they want. It's a silver plan inside of a silver plan. So let's say you have someone who has a silver plan that has a $5,000 deductible and they can qualify for a CSR. That $5,000 deductible now may be a $100 deductible. Their copay of $30 may be zero. Their max out of pocket that was 3,000 may be 100. You get the drift here. The CSR inside the CSR is a silver plan inside of a silver plan. People who are low income, this is what we strive for them to get. When you're on Health Sherpa, there's a filter button in the upper right hand area where you can hit CSR. Okay, it will just show the CSR plans. I show those first. Okay, sometimes the CSRs may not be a viable option for them. Because it may be all of a sudden there's zero plan premium that's on a bronze or something. A CSR might be 150 bucks a month, unfortunately. But a lot of times, especially in the big metropolitan areas, we have great CSRs that are even zero premium or even low five dollars a month. Okay, so be very be very conscious and be very diligent of CSRs. Okay, they are wonderful plans that save your clients thousands and thousands of dollars. Are CSRs only within the silver plans? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, so when to enroll. All right, so we know we have an OEP. We know the OEP is November 1st to January 15th. January 15th could always change. Okay, a new president could could bring it back to December fifteenth, for uh, for January, um, for Janu January the first. Okay, um, I hope it stays um, January fifteenth because the extra time is always welcomed, especially with a lot of us doing, um, you know, Medicare uh, MAs. The extra time and the agents it really helps them out um, to to spread out their time. Um, this right here, so a, a footnote, if they take an effective date, December 5th, if, if they, well, let me, let me rephrase this. If they get, if they submit the policy December 15th or prior, 
it'll take a January 1st effective date. Okay. If they, uh, during the OEP, because of all the business coming in, if they submit the application December 16th to January 15th, it'll take a 2 1 effective date. Okay. So if the apps are submitted prior to December or to prior to December 15th or prior, it'll take the the 1 1 effective date. If it's after December 15th, it'll take a 2 1 effective date. Do we know offhand, Joey, uh, on the state exchanges, do they follow the same open enrollment period as the federal or is that? By yes, ma'am. It's they yes, do. Ma okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, um, so shop is for the small employers. Um, there's some information that I'm trying to gather. Um, there is a lot of stuff coming out on ICRA. Okay, um, ICRA is it, there are plans done through ICRA um, that are going to be very, very beneficial. There are subsidies coming out from the government to help employees and employers through ICRA, they get they can use that money to buy um, um, federal mm -hmm. and state based plans. Okay, um, I don't have all my knowledge on that yet. I'm I'm still learning it, um, but it can be very beneficial to agents who get into groups and they can use the ICRA dollars to help fund group plans. Okay. Um, it may not come into anybody and they may, it's, it's a relatively specialty, but if you have someone who does it and they get, and they get into a, some group status, they can write a lot of apps very quickly and, uh, it's paid for by the government on this new ICRA, um, on these new ICRA uh, guidelines. So more to come on that. Just wanted you to be aware. Okay. That there are some things coming out, um, on that and there, some things have already come out. Um, but I just want you to be aware. When, when are you expecting that information to come out? Like what, what, like October? Some of it's already out. Some of it's already out. Um, I just have it. They haven't released all some of the, the, uh, the numbers on how much per employee, um, that the employer can use. But the, but the guidelines of what they're going to, to do, Alex is already there. It's just the, it's just the funding amount. Okay. okay thank you. All right. So to apply, um, these are how we can apply. We've already gone through those. Um, you know, they have multiple, um, um, languages and, um, you know, it can be done in English and Spanish. Um, but we want to make sure that we are doing our due diligence with the QR codes our social media outlets for the agents that make sure they, they route everything is attached to the insureds uh, to our agents in PN numbers. Okay. So for the for the um for health health Sherpa or healthcare.gov, any of that stuff to go in, it's gonna when it goes to the carrier, it's gonna be attached to their NPN number. And that's how they really recognize who gets compensation and then the compensation goes to their agent number when it goes to all the, you know, all of their internal stuff. So make sure that they know to use their NPN number when that insured is filling out their own information, okay? Uh, premium payment, you know, let's try to do EFT when all possible, okay? Um, even if it's 75 cents a month, Try to put it on EFT. Credit cards change because they are going to expire or they lose them or they have to replace them. Same thing with debit cards. You know how people who have to mail in a check, they forget. They go past the grace period. So that means their policies expire. So let's try to when all, I mean, even when they don't want to, let's talk them into it, get our agents, try to put them on EFT. Um, if there is a zero plan premium, of course, it's zero plan premium, but like I said earlier, sometimes the best plan may have 75 cents, a dollar, $5 attached to it. 
So we want to make sure that we try to put those on EFT when all possible. Okay. Hey, Joey. Um, yes, do okay. So I had a question the other day. An agent was asking me, do do we or do we instruct? They wanted to know if they needed to take their first month's premium. The agent to to have that con with their consumer, uh, either set it up or do it. Is that something that that you te teach the agents to do? Is to sit there with them and do the first payment, or do you we not? Uh, how you, does that work? You, you can. Um, it's also it's also specifically done by the carrier. Some carriers will allow you to do it. Some carriers won't let you pay until the policy has actually been approved or or okay. gone through the system. So you have to know which carrier will allow you to do the payment at that time. Um, okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. I know. Yeah, wow. it's not. Um, I think there's a, off the top of my head. I'm drawing a blank. Um, I believe it is a Blue Cross that has um, a payment deal. Ascension has some payment dif differences. Um, but yeah, you 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 have to. Um, you can't go in and electronically do it initially. They have to, and then some of them don't take electronic initially. Um, and then right now, some of them are redoing their portals. So they're re they're redoing it. It's just you have to know you have to know which ones are doing it, and it changes. And that's where our agents have to be diligent as well. We can guide them. We can we can tell them to you know to be careful, but they have to help us out as well. We're busy. We're we're going in twenty five different directions. They need to be. They need to do their due diligence, and they they need to be diligent as well. We can give them what it may be, but team, it may change next year. Okay, and better has changed twice already. Okay, so, um, you know, make sure that they understand that they need to be on top of what they're looking at as well. Consumers who want or need to end their marketplace plans can do, can do so um, um, for any form of reasons. Um, they need to make sure they call healthcare.gov and let them know what the reason is. Um, and document it and uh, put it in email. I also would follow up with the carrier and let them know as well, but it, make sure that you do also do it through healthcare.gov because healthcare.gov will also, and they should contact the uh, health carrier, okay? All right, here's a great slide that I that I like. Because um, many Americans have health insurance through their employer um, or through a family member, and we're always wondering, well, what's the you know what's the affordability factor? What you know what what you may deem unaffordable may not be what the government deems unaffordable. Okay, so the unaffordable standard is it's actually um, nine point three percent now. So nine point three of their income. Uh, on a monthly basis is what the government deems unaffordable. Okay. So if it's, if it's, if you have a ACA plan that if it's over that, then that is where they're going to be. That is their cutoff 9.1, 9.3%. Um, consumers who are eligible for job based coverage are generally not eligible for financial assistance to the marketplace unless their job based coverage is considered unaffordable. Or, or does not meet coverage standards and 9.1. Also, team, what does not meet standards is a MET plan, minimal essential coverage. There are a lot of group plans that the government screwed up and they let MET plans be a qualified plan that a consumer can buy to satisfy the laws and not be penalized and it's not called if they went and had a $50,000 bill, they're going to be out of pocket $50,000. Okay, it's not health coverage. These MEC plans are, but they are considered qualified in coverage. That's what they mean by um, does it meet certain coverage standards? So if they don't have, if they have a MEC plan, you can sell them an ACA plan. Um, with financial assistance, okay. What is what is an example, Joey, of a of a MEC plan, or who 
who how would they have access so to an it? employer so an employer who has more than 50 employees doesn't want to provide health care because it's going to cost them twenty thousand dollars a month they can buy a met plan on them for a hundred bucks a month okay Okay. And how do we how do we plan, recognize uh, one? How do we know it's a mech plan? Um, because the, all they have on there is they can go get a physical, um, and maybe one doctor visit. Okay. And that's really okay. about it. Yeah. Okay. And if they went to the doctor, if they went and had a um a, a, a cut or went to went to went to have something, and they were out of pocket the whole cost. Then you probably they probably would recognize to the agent that that's that's more than more than not going to be a met plan that they were on. And met, okay. and met plans are not. Um, do they come with PDP like prescription drug coverage? Or they got to get like one of those discount deals. No, usually met plans don't have any prescription drug coverage on them. Okay, just asking to confirm. Yep. No, usually all the, usually all the MEC plan has on it is um, is you is you get an annual physical, and you may get you know, like you know two or three doctor visits. Okay, so though that is something that would not meet um, certain coverage standards. All right, so we're getting close to wrapping up here, team. Uh, key points to remember. Uh, the marketplace is a way for qualified individuals and families to find and buy health insurance. They got that. The OEP, Open Enrollment Period for Individuals and Families, generally runs November 1st, to January 15th. That could change. We hope it never does of the, of the year prior to the year coverage begins. The enrollment period for dates um, for state base may differ for the enrollment periods, but it hasn't. It's, it's been following the exact same enrollment period as the um, as the um, November 1st to January 15th. Consumers may enroll in or change plans during an SEP if they qualify. States have flexibility to establish their own marketplace. <coughs> okay. Individuals and households may may be um, eligible for lower costs on their monthly premiums and out of pocket costs. There is the there's help available through marketplace call centers, marketplace enrollment assisters, um, um, assistance. The the call center, um, actually, I've had agents have clients call due to certain problems, and they have been very beneficial. Okay, so I have no problem having, and they and they've actually answered the phone in a timely manner. Um, so, I don't have a problem with calling the call center. Um, they don't switch to, them over to a salesperson? No, they do not. Okay. Okay. Nope. They do not. Um, they, if you, when, when you call it, there is a, um, there are prompts that you will hit to go into a section of which one, which, which problem are you having? Um, it's a lot more uniform and a lot more a, a user friendly. Um, if consumers don't agree, you always have your appeals and grievances, just like we do in the Medicare Advantage space. All right, team, this is the FPL chart. Y'all, y'all, all seen. Um, I'll send it out to y'all again in the uh, in the attachment form. Um, like I said, this is the Bible. This is the Grail that really makes everybody's life simpler um, for for ACA. Your household size, your income. Um, where you fall in the, uh, in the FPL status. Okay. So this is great. Um, we can get it where we can have the agent's name at the bottom and their phone number. Um, you know, it's just, you know, how, however, or, or if you want to put your, as an SD, you want to put your, um, you know, information down there to help the agent or whatever it may be. Um, we can, we can modify the bottom part a little bit. To, um, to, to help. Any questions on this FPL chart? We're good? Okay. All right. Current SCPs, 100% um, of the federal poverty level is a year-round SCP. 
Okay, that's all year long. Um, the Medicaid unwinding, okay, has been extended. Okay, so that is also right now. I mean, I, I'd like to know how much money the government is spending. It seems like every other commercial, um, I can't remember the guy's name, is it are, are you losing Medicaid or lost Medicaid? Um, you know, they are spending millions of dollars about edu educating, uh, have you lost Medicaid? So it's that's still a um, that's still available. There's still lots of people out there. Joey, um, can you always, describe that first one, please? I don't understand what you mean. Up here, one fifty up here. One hundred and fifty percent of the federal poverty level. So up here, Jan, the household size, you see, one hundred and fifty percent. If they are twenty one thousand eight seven or less, depending on their household size. They can get on an ACA plan all year long. Oh, got it. Okay, thank you. Of course, change of household, denial of Medicaid, and if they um, are lose a job and lose coverage. Okay, those are all SEPs um, for the year 2024. How how long do they have? Like they get a denial or not a denial or like for Medicaid. So when that dropped, is there a certain amount of time that they have to like a 60 day, 90 day? Do you know? I believe, I believe it's 60 days. 60 days. Okay. Yes, From their the time of loss. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Um, this is what is really needed for um, someone to start writing ACA, okay? Um, they have to get FFM certified um, and get certification through what the state-based the state base may need. A lot of them still need a certification and they will have you do the federal certification on what on what you might need. Um, I don't know all the different ones, but that's what you need. Um, when does that go, open up new year? Um, it will open up in July for current for current people who have already for renewal. And then I believe in August for people for new. That's correct. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, your health Sherpa account or healthcare.gov. To run a quote, you need to know the age of the person, their income. Are they a tobacco user? How many dependents they have and their zip code. Okay, that's what you need. That's what an agent would need to run a quote on Health Sherpa. Okay, sometimes the best plan may be two or three pages in. The zero plan premium may not be the best plan. It may be the easiest plan. Oh, I got it. That's not it. We have scopes that the insurer has to sign. They have to sign them when you talk to them and when you change information. So you so if I talk to an insured, you have to it can be done over the written, it can be done written or oral. Okay. So if I talk to if I talk to Jan and I say, Hey, Miss um, uh, Hey, Miss Walsh, I need to talk to you and get to get some information from you. They have to sign a form for me to be able to obtain their information. And then may, we agree to everything. They have to sign another form. For me to be able to input the information. Okay. Do we have that electronically? We do, yes, ma'am. Okay. Every time that they talk to, to the insured about their coverage, they have to have the the personal for information form signed again or get verbal consent and record it. Okay. And ACA is going to be added to Integrity Center shortly, too. So we'll have you know, the Medicare portion, the life portion, and also ACA will be available through Integrity Center as well. That is fantastic. Y'all are- It that, is yeah, fantastic. That, that, that is awesome. That's gonna save. Now, what I yeah. was having agents do early on 
is I was having them use their 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 number for to to get verbal to read to read the form. Do you uh, do you acknowledge and state your name? Can I can I get you to verbally say yes to this? I was having them use their Medicare Advantage number and their Medicare Advantage call log because that is a CMS approved and that is kept for ten years, just like they're needed to do with these forms. Okay, so I was in, I was instructing agents to do the exact same thing that we're doing both to use their um, Medicare Center um, number and uh, call log as well. Okay. This is the consent form. Oh, and go back. Um, and the consent form is right here. And then it didn't show the back one. I don't know why, but I have it on front and back where the front side is your is your your personal information or the consent form. And the back side is your PII form, your personal information. So I made it easy where the agent can just sign here for your consent for me to take your information and sign here for me to put all your personal information into the system. So it's all on one page front and back. Okay, and, and I have this for you as well. Any questions on what we've discussed so far before I show you all the, um, the state based um, the state based states. Okay. Joey, that was incredible. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Uh, it, Bravo. It, wow. All right. You're Very welcome. Nice. So here are here are the state based exchanges, and um, I have this um, I have this that I can share with you all. I take it, save it on your desktop. Um, you can go to each one, okay, and look at it. Um, here are all the states that are on the state based exchange. Okay. Um, California, Colorado, Connecticut, DC, Idaho, Kentucky, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, and Arkansas, Georgia, Oregon. Now, Arkansas, Georgia, and Oregon are state-based, but they are on the federal platform. Remember, I told you there were three states that are state-based, but they are on Health Sherpa and they are on healthcare.gov. Those are the three states. Georgia is seeking to transition to only state-based and coming off the federal in 2025. And I can help keep everybody up to date on all of this stuff since I have a, I'm kind of, I get a lot of stuff coming to me already from things that I've signed up for that if y'all do the same thing, you can, but I've kind of, you know, plugged myself in and filtered to a lot of stuff. So, um, and of course, if I get something that I know is going to be beneficial, I'm going to, I'm going to share it. Um, and so we can kind of help on that as well. And and by all means, I don't know it all. I, I mean, I've only been doing this for three years. I'm still learning myself. If you if you have a question that comes up and it's something that we don't know, please share it with the team. Okay. Um, and you know, and and like Alan said, if there is an agency that you know it's just they're a good agency, they're they're advanced, and you want me to take you want me to take them over, just let me know. Okay, and I'll and I'll and I'll take them over because sometimes it's hard to talk to an agency that knows a lot more than you than and to get them to come on board when we're looking at a bigger picture, trying to get their Medicare business and get their other lines of business. It's just there's a there's a lot going on, and so um, we're still a team here. Um, I want to help everybody grow and everybody do the same thing. And so it's not anything's different, but we all want to work together and um, still do what we can do to help cope, um, help Copeland 
achieve what we can um, do together, okay? A um, lot of great information, Joey. Um, would it be helpful? I mean, just I'm just throwing it out there to have a share drive folder just for ACA and then, you know, put everything yeah. relevant in that folder. Yeah, I mean, yes, ma'am. I mean, I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. And then we can kind of um, all I have, look at it. Um, everybody, I, I have um, all of the. Uh, um, so Copeland. So almost every one of our carriers, except for maybe a regional area carrier, um, has a designated um, account manager. Okay, and I have all of those for y'all already. Okay, so um, whether it be United, whether it be Cigna, whether it be Ambetter, um, Aetna, um, Blue Cross, um, I have all of those people that. Um, that I will share with you guys. I have all their information and all their emails and phone numbers um, already on a, um, a word document. Joey, you did a great, great job. Lots of information, lots of details. Um, I know there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. Just make sure, like I said, the important things is, is that just make sure your clients um, um just make sure that your make sure the agents that you're training them they they know about the the um, the consent forms whether it be verbal or oral you know getting those in those are CMS I'll be honest with you isn't going to do a damn thing um, no one hardly anyone is getting them um, but I want to be compliant I don't want the agents to be to be filed on um, we have people agents who aren't doing it and they're they're CMS is saying call Department of Insurance. Department of Insurance is saying call CMS. Well, guess what? <laughs> that's just, that's nothing. Okay, that's just, that's crazy, stupid. Um, everyone is getting, you know, I don't wanna mess with it. You don't, let's, let's implement a law, but have no one, have no one to implement it or to try to work on it. So there's nothing out there for this, um, but let's be compliant. Especially now that um, integrity is going to have an ACA portal uh, or thing for the agents to use, that's going to make our lives so much easier from a compliance standpoint. Okay. Get your, if you are in a state based area, get your state based, if you can, get your state based non res and go in there and learn the state based system, navigate through it. It'll help you with your agents be more professional and just it'll help you because they're not going to know it. They're going to ask you a thousand questions and it's just, you know, it, it's just what, what we have to do. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work on that initially, but unfortunately, it's just part of our structure of where we have to go with this. Um, and like I said, we're doing we're, we're doing this to try to help us sell more Medicare. Okay, that's what I've always preached from day one is that when I'm doing this with you guys, now that we're doing this together and you're doing it, it's to help that 58 to 64 market, the aging in, the referrals, the conversation pieces. This should all be our marketing talk or all be our marketing speeches when we're talking to these agents. Yes, it's going to, you know, add a little more to our income. Um, but it's the Medicare side, the Medicare supplements, it's the conversations that we have, it's the professionalism. We, we want our agents to be professional. Um, and this just shows how we're professional knowing that what well, we need to have our agents do. So it, there's so much how it connects and goes together that it's, um, it's what's, it's what I like about it. Joey, one question. So, do you yes, keep, sir. do you keep Kathy in the loop with all of these? I try not to. Maybe you should. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I do. Um, on the CMS, on the uh, ACA, the compliance side is nothing like a, is nothing like MA. Okay. I understand. Um, yes. That's that's that is the great part about ACA, is that you can use the words like I and me and great um, and the best, whereas you can't use those words on. Medicare Advantage. You can use those words on ACA. 
And and like I said, and then we we and then we incorporate in the underwritten products that fill in the people who are over 400 percent of FPL. I know it's a lot to entertain, and I'm hoping to be able to stay in control of some of that because that's just another level. That's just another thing, but it really is an important product, an important part of what we do for the people who don't get a subsidy, who want something different besides an ACA. Rather than getting nothing or paying eighteen hundred bucks a month, we have some quality products out there that um, that can still be used for people again over four hundred percent of the federal poverty level and um, that are underwritten and knowing how to use them correctly and train correctly um, have a lot of value um, to what we're still trying to do. So that's what I got. Anything else, Dusty, Jan, team? No, you did great, Joey. Okay. A lot of information. Any questions you have, you're going to have some. Shoot me a text, give me an email. Um, Jan, Dusty, get with me. We'll work with uh, Shannon, get it into the OneDrive, however we can put it. Put it in the OneDrive where we can find it, because I can't find half the things I look for in the OneDrive, or it takes me a half an hour to find it anyways. So um, get with me and we can get us all in a one drive, make sure everyone knows where it's at and um, everyone um, have a great rest of your day. And um, I will talk with you all soon. Thank Thanks. you, Joey. All right. All right. Thank you, Joey. Appreciate right. it. Thank, Bye. You, Joey. Bye, Thank you, Joey. You're welcome. Bye y'all.